50 years ago, President Kennedy asked the CIA to install secret taping devices in the Oval Office. Many of his conversations with cabinet members and heads of state appear for the first time in a new book. It's called Listening In, the secret White House recordings of John F. Kennedy. The president's daughter, Caroline, wrote the foreword to the book. And recently, we talked about the tapes and listened to some of them, including a letter that Kennedy dictated to his wife about their daughter. There's Jackie. I'm... Uh... Divide this letter into two parts, one uh, typewritten and the other handwritten. The typewritten part to give you the news of my visit to Newport, period. I went up there last uh, Friday afternoon, and uh, Caroline looked uh, beautiful. She was a great success on the beach and seemed to love the water. What goes through your mind knowing that it's a father talking about his love for his daughter? Oh, well, it's great. The scene that he is describing is really familiar, so it's really nice to be able to place both of us in that yeah. scene. What did you learn about your dad listening in? Well, I think I got, first of all, I got a much greater appreciation for him at work. And I think kids, no kid knows what their parents do all day. And so for it's me, true. this was really, in that way, incredibly moving. And I mean, I feel so lucky that there are so many recordings of him and um, and all of that that give me a way to learn about or connect with him. And you said something interesting. It's true. No kid really knows what their parents do. So here you are at the time of his death, five going on six. What did you think he did? When did you know that he was president of the United States? Or did you ever know that? Well, I don't know. I guess he became president when I was three. It was just, you know, what, whatever, where we lived, what I did. And I remember dancing. He would um, clap his hands and my brother and I would dance. and. Uh, and I remember, you know, it was a big treat to, to go over and be able to see him in his office. Some very serious things happened in the Oval Office, of course. One of them was the Cuban Missile Crisis. It's very possible the Russians will fire at them as they board and we'd have to fire back and have quite a slaughter. I would think we'd want two or three things. First, I think we'd want to have some control over cameras aboard these boats so that we don't have a lot of people shooting a lot of pictures, which in the press might be yeah, we'll embarrassing to control all the picture taken Are we on the boats. Yeah. They all are turning their cameras. Secondly, I don't know enough about the ships, but whether they ought to fire and whether they ought to go through three or four steps, such as asking them to stop, they don't stop, asking them to have their crew come above deck so that they don't be damaged, and three, so that we have this record made. Were you surprised at how detailed he was? I think that really came through in so many of these conversations, his attention to detail. And that was something that I had always heard about from my mother. But, I mean, he was really paying attention to every bit of... A lot of things. Uh, which what did I think your mom say to you about his attention to detail? Well, he what just had a, you know, a, a incredible memory, an incredible curiosity. You know, really always wanted to know everything about mm -hmm. whatever was going on. You know, one thing that uh, really struck me was his involvement in the civil rights. I look at the country today. There are so many people that don't know the history, have no clue about the history of civil rights, and here is your father speaking very passionately about a. A young black student who had been admitted to the University of Mississippi. They were protesting on the grounds. They did not want James Meredith there. And your father was talking to the governor about that. We got to get order up there, and that's what we thought we were going to have. President, please, why don't you, uh, can't you give an order to try to remove Meredith? How can I remove him, Governor, when there's a, a riot in the street? And you may step out of that building and something happened to him. I can't remove him under those conditions. You, let's get order up there, then we can do something about America. Well, we've got to get somebody up there now to get order and stop the firing and the shooting. Then we, you and I will talk on the phone about Meredith. But first, we've got to get order. He's really mad, and I, and I know that tone of voice from my aunts and uncles. And um, I think that, you know, civil rights really went from being an important but not heated issue at the very beginning of his presidency to the major domestic um, crisis of, of the 20th century and the moral issue of our time. What do you think he would have thought of Barack Obama? Uh, well, I think one of the things that I think both of them shared was just bringing in a whole new generation to the democratic process. And I think that that's uh, really a significant accomplishment and legacy. And we don't even know what all the people that Barack Obama inspired are going to contribute mm -hmm. yet. Are you ever overwhelmed by your legacy? Because, you know, when people think of Kennedy, they think of Camelot, they think of your mom, they think of your dad, they think of your brother. And now, you know, of course, we have you. Are you ever overwhelmed I mean, by it? Now, of course, we have you. Well, we do. <laughs> well, you know what I mean, Caroline, that right, we have I you. you. I know you. Are you ever overwhelmed by the legacy of that? Or do you go through a thing, you know, it just isn't fair? 
Well, I'm really proud of my family and my, I mean, my parents. I can't imagine having better parents mm -hmm. uh, and a more wonderful brother. So I feel really fortunate that those are my family. And, um, you know, I wish they were here. But yeah, of um, my own family, my children, my husband uh, are really my, my real family. And so we don't really think of it in you don't really think of larger we're Kennedys? Way. Right, no, we're just no. us. Right. We're just us? Right. Fifty years later, the, the Kennedy family is still very much in the news, sometimes good, sometimes bad. And I'm wondering what's your first reaction when you get a call that says there's a, another Kennedy story coming up? What's your first reaction to it? Let me see if I can guess who it's about. <laughs> first reaction is let me see if I can guess who it's about. All right, I have to say, um, I know you're a member of Team Maria. I am. Arnold just did an interview with 60 Minutes where he's talking about his life and the end of his marriage. Uh, what are your thoughts on that about him speaking? Um, I, well, I don't, I don't have any thoughts to share on that. You know what she said? She said, I actually have a lot of thoughts. I'm just not going to share them with CBS this morning, which I totally get. You know, anybody who's a member of Team Maria just sort of wishes Arnold would stop talking is the sense that I get. Mm -hmm. She is still incredibly very private and poised. Yeah. yeah. And what a treasure that she has got the tapes and shared them with us. Yeah. Very nice.